Hi, and welcome back to Sign Up. On today's programme, we have advice on how to eat pizza and chocolate and still keep fit and healthy. Kevin's back with a grammar fact. And Josephine has another deaf success story. But first up, Senil explains all you need to know about Irish politics. Do you know the difference between a Taoiseach and Tánaiste? Senna is on hand to explain all, so don't go away. These people. We often see their faces on TV and in the daily newspapers. And you may wonder who they are and what job they do. Well, they're all politicians. Every day we make decisions such as what to wear, what to eat for breakfast, and what to watch on TV. Politics is how society makes decisions. For example, the kind of laws we have to abide by, and how Ireland is run. As a society, we have elected these people to represent us in government. But before we get into who and what these people do, we need to explain how the Irish government works. The government in Ireland is made up like this. The Oireachtas. Is an Irish word that refers to the National Parliament of Ireland. A parliament is a group of people who are elected by us to work together to make the laws of Ireland. The Oireachtas is sometimes referred to in its full name as the Houses of the Oireachtas. Because it is made up of three houses. Now, these are not like the houses we live in, but are institutions within the Oireachtas. There are three houses, the lower house, Dáil Éireann, or the Dáil for short, and the upper house, Shannad Éireann, known as the Senate. are here inside Leinster House. The third house is the President. Decisions that are made in the Dáil will be referred to the Senate before being passed on to the President who will sign them into law. You may recognise the Dáil Éireann from watching the news. The Dáil has 166 TDs. 
who we elect by voting for them. They debate and discuss issues such as health care and education and pass bills which are drafts of new laws or proposed changes to current laws. In the Dáil, on one side, sits the party with the highest number of TDs or the government in power. They sometimes share power with another political party. This is called a coalition. On the other side of the Dáil sit the opposition, who are other political parties and TDs that didn't get enough votes to form a government, but still play an important role in questioning the government's decisions on behalf of the people. <laughs> His is an inspirational example. Shannon Aaron, or the Shannon, which is the Irish word for Senate, currently has 60 members called senators. So what do they do? Well, they debate issues revise laws that have been passed in Dáil Éireann and, occasionally, begin the process of introducing new laws. Daily, in, in I hear like on a different topic, I would Mr. like... Mr Minister, no responsibility. Now, let's talk about the people who are involved in politics. We have ministers or TDs. TD is short for the Irish word Chocta Dála, which means Dál Deputy. In total, there are 166 TDs, who are all members of Dál Éireann. TDs are elected by the people of Ireland and each TD represents an area of Ireland or constituency. Examples of constituencies in Ireland include Dublin North West, Dublin South West and Kerry North. TDs have offices in their constituencies where they meet the public to discuss local issues. Mary Harney is the Minister for Health and Children. Bat O'Keefe is the Minister for Education and Science. And Dermot O'Hearn is the Minister for Justice, Equality and Law Reform. This is only a few out of many ministers. The government implements policy which the 15 government departments must then follow. Staff in the departments, civil servants, will advise their ministers who will then go back to the government to discuss their suggestions. Ministers are appointed by the Taoiseach. Taoiseach is the Irish word for Prime Minister, which means he is the head of the Irish government. Our current Taoiseach is Brian Cowan. He replaced Bertie Ahern on May 7th, 2008. He is nominated by the TDs in Dáil Éireann and then appointed Taoiseach by the President. As head of government, the Taoiseach coordinates the work of all 15 government departments. 
he chairs government meetings. And as the chief policy maker, he is responsible for explaining what the policies mean and why he has implemented them. He also presents bills passed by the Dáil and Senate to the President in order for them to become law. The Taoiseach is responsible for keeping the President updated on domestic and international policy matters. Tarnishta is the Irish word for Deputy Prime Minister, who takes the place of the Taoiseach if the Taoiseach dies, permanently loses his health, or is temporarily absent. The Taoiseach nominates the Tarnishta, who can sometimes be from a different political party than the Taoiseach. The current Tarnishta is Mary Coughlin. The Progressive Democrats, all the younger people, the opportunity to participate. All these people involved in politics are known as politicians. And most of them are part of groups called political parties. In Ireland, the six main parties are Fianna Fáil, Fine Gael, the Green Party, the Labour Party, the Progressive Democrats, and Sinn Féin. There are also independent TDs who aren't part of any party. Before an election, the political parties outline their different views and include them in a manifesto. They might include policies on how they would improve health care, reduce taxes, etc. Their manifesto outlines the actions they would take if elected. Next time a politician knocks on your door asking for your vote, ask them why you should give it to them and where he or she stands on issues that are important to you. And you can then make an informed decision on who to vote for. We're here at Oris on Uchtaran. Which is where the President of Ireland lives. The President of Ireland is currently Mary McAleese. She was elected by the people of Ireland. She is the Irish Head of State. Which means she is the formal leader of Ireland. She has limited powers, unlike some other countries like the President of the USA. The President has the power to appoint the Taoiseach and sign bills into law. She can also dissolve the doll, appoint court judges and Officers of the Defence Forces, such as the Army, the Navy and the Air Corps. The President of Ireland 
serves seven years, but can be re-elected to serve a total of 14 years. Mary McAleese's presidency will end in 2011 and Ireland will need to elect a new president. The President of Ireland has such an important role to play. She's even mentioned in Bunracht na Heron. Which is the Constitution of Ireland. But at a moment in time, that search to help us understand the transformative power. The Constitution of Ireland is a set of laws used by the government and people of Ireland to govern. It confirms that we are an independent democratic state that rule ourselves and that we elect representatives to make decisions on our behalf. Democracy means we're a society that believes in equal rights, fair trials and freedom of speech. This means that we, as the people of Ireland, elect who we want in power. The Constitution was adopted in 1937, after we formally declared our independence from the UK. In the next programme, Sarah Jane will show you where to get the right information and how to vote. Remember, it's important for you to be involved and to vote. Hey there! At the start of a sentence, there's always a big letter to start a sentence. This is called a capital letter. You may have seen capital letters used in a sentence before. Well, let me explain a little more about them. A person's name will have a capital letter. For example, Sean Ryan, with a big S and a big R, like this. Or a place name will have a capital letter, such as Cork, which starts with a big C, like this. Or how about a business or brand name, like Cleary's, which starts with a big C. See? Or how about sellotape, which starts with a big S? What about specific days, like Christmas or Easter, which starts with a big E? The same applies to days of the week or months, such as Monday, which starts with a big M, or February, which starts with a big F. There's no need to give all words in a sentence a capital letter. You would only give a capital letter at the beginning of a sentence or by using one of these examples. See you next week. Stop! What? Think of your body! I'm not fat. In fact, I'm pretty normal. It doesn't matter what you look like on the outside. It's what's going on the inside that counts. Did you know that a burger can contain this much fat? this much sugar and this much salt and this is just for the burger let's not forget the chips which could have this much fat this much sugar and this much salt and don't think that's all let's not forget your fizzy drink this is the sugar content this is way too much for one day you should be thinking about eating more healthily and keeping fit with regular exercise.
these days talks about dieting or losing weight, but they should be more concerned about healthy eating. You should make sure the food you eat is nutritious, which means that it contains all the right nutrients. Nutrients are elements in food that we need to give us energy to help repair the body's cuts or broken bones and help us to grow. And also nutrients protect us from illness. They have different names like carbohydrates. Protein. And fats. Wow, I didn't know there was so much going on inside my lunch. Well, you can't see nutrients. But when you eat them, they work hard to keep you healthy. And if you don't have enough of them, you might find that you get sick more easily. How do I know if I'm eating the right foods to keep myself healthy? Come on, I'll show you. When you're looking at food, check the packaging like this. You can see that the package has additional information, such as the recommended daily allowance also known as or DA or the guideline daily allowance also called the GDA both mean the same thing and tell you how much you should be eating every day but I think an easier way to remember is by using the food pyramid You see, the food pyramid is a visual way to show the kind of foods you should be eating every day, putting the foods we need most at the bottom and the food we need least at the top. Okay? Okay, so what kind of food do I need most of? Foods that contain a lot of the nutrient, carbohydrate. They're important because carbohydrate is where our body gets its energy from. This means we can do activities like walking or running without getting too tired. I'll show you the kind of foods with carbohydrate. Let's have a look. Bread. That's right. Carbohydrates are broken into two categories starch and sugars. Try to avoid getting your carbohydrates from sugary foods because too much sugar will become fat in your body. Remember, carbohydrate provides you with energy, so it's important to keep active and use up all the energy you get from the food, otherwise it turns into fat. Should I be eating all this food every day? Oh no, no. You should eat around six portions. One portion would be a bowl of cereal, one potato, or one slice of bread. OK, so what's next? The next thing is fruit and vegetables. They're important because they hold vitamins and minerals, which are both nutrients. Vitamin A is important for your eyesight, and vitamin C is needed to quickly heal you if you get a cut. Minerals like iron keep your blood healthy with red blood cells. So do you want a hand? You should have four to five portions every day. One portion could be a banana or a glass of juice, but make sure it's sugar-free. Okay? Right. 
So what's next? Next up are dairy products like milk, cheese and yoghurt. These are full of the important mineral calcium and vitamin D for healthy teeth and bones. How much of these should I be eating every day? About three portions. But children, teenagers aged between 13 and 18, and pregnant women, should have about five portions. Next in the pyramid are meat, fish, eggs, beans and peas. They contain minerals and vitamins, but they also contain the nutrient fat. So you should only eat maybe two portions a day and in moderation, which means in small amounts, okay? Here's the beans. Right, let me guess what goes on top. Sugar and fats? Right. A tiny bit of fat is actually good for healthy skin, energy and growth. However, if you eat too much, you will put on weight, which can be bad for your heart. Try to choose products that say high in polyunsaturates. Or monounsaturates. Because these fats can help reduce cholesterol, which is the bad fat in the blood that can cause a heart attack. So, if I eat all these foods in the right amounts, I'll get all the nutrients I need to stay healthy. Right. You also need to drink about seven glasses of water a day and do about 20 minutes of exercise about three times a week. You don't have to have an expensive gym membership to do it. Why not? Why not get off the bus one stop earlier and walk the last bit of your journey? Why not take the stairs instead of the lift? Instead of meeting a friend for coffee and cake, why not meet up for a walk? Wow, thanks SJ. I feel healthier already. You don't have to give them up completely. Foods like that are fine, as long as you don't eat them more than once or twice a week. You should have a varied diet and save the junk food for a special treat. Oh, and eat the salad too. Last year, See Here, the programme for the deaf community in the UK, voted Frances McGinn the greatest Briton of all time. But in fact, he was born in Cork in 1861. And he's actually Irish. He was educated in London and travelled to Gallaudet University in the US. There he was inspired by the education and opportunities available to deaf people. When he returned home, he began supporting deaf people in Belfast, helping them find employment and accommodation. In 1890, he was the first person to set up the British Deaf and Dumb Association, which is now known as the British Deaf Association. Francis died in 1918. Hope you enjoyed today's show. If you want more information, check out www.deaf.ie. See you next week. Mm -hmm.